Well, rain's forecast for the next three days, but at the moment it's spectacularly nice, isn't it? It's beautiful, isn't it? When did you first realise that there might be something under there? Well, I've ploughed this field about 25 times in the last 30 years. And as a rule, we would break two or three of these shear bolts every time we plough it. So that's what it ought to look like? And... That's the new one, and that's a broken one. But it could just be boulders or something? We do get a lot of big standstone boulders. But then these finds started to come up. Yes, that's right. So metal detectors, they found a number of um, Roman coins and brooches at which were confirmed by Dorset County Museum and Bournemouth University. And then, this year, a shadow appeared in the field? Yes, when I was playing it this spring, because the soil was damp, the soil was dark, yeah. and there was a square shape of lighter, chalky colour. About how big? About four times the size of that reservoir. Four times this big? Well, it's going to be some structure, isn't it, Guy? If there's a building that size on the top of the hill, it will be very, very exciting. I've seen the coins, which are great. Yeah. There are lots of them. They're Roman, there's no doubt about that. We've got some structural debris here, which I've started looking through. Some of that's not Roman, so I'm not quite sure yet, but there's a real enigma up here. What could it be? I think, and it's only a theory, the most likely thing it will have been is a Roman temple. Right up here, it's not an ideal place for a villa or a farm. There are lots of temples built on hilltop locations, particularly in the late Roman period, and that's the same period as the coins. How do we find out what it is? Well, I think we've got to do some geophysics over the area where the farm machinery was bent to see if there's any structures buried there. But we've also got the chance here to do some field walking because although there's a crop on the field of maize, the plants are far enough apart to give us a strip to walk along to pick up any finds. What about that crop, Roger? John's already been blundering his way through it. Well, I've got lots of years to grow crops on this field. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. From the finds that we've got, can you tell what sort of Roman building it is? Well, not from this, because none of this is convincingly Roman. You're kidding? No, I'm not. I, I can see why people have thought it at first glance. Some of you think, oh, yes, that looks like it's a piece of Roman imbrex, but it's actually very hard and got an uncharacteristically smooth surface. Same with this. It looks like a piece of tegula, the flange roof tile, but it's actually far too thin, and it's been moulded, and Roman brick and tile is handmade. So we've got metal finds, yeah. like the coins... Yeah, we've got the coins, brooches and, and the brooches. Stuff. But there was never a Roman building here? Oh, well, that's not necessarily the case, because we could have a building in timber. There's certainly Roman activity up here, but from this there is nothing to indicate a substantial stone or tiled roofed structure. Sorry. This is going to be one of those digs. And everyone's putting on a brave face. I would have thought. But the truth is, we're sticking in a trench on a broad scatter of metal detectorist finds and outside the Geophys survey area. I wonder if our spectators have got any idea of how close to disaster we are. So what we do then is we'll, we'll strip a bit of an area yeah. rather than just going straight down. That's right. Strip an area it, and yeah. then try it. In case there's still stuff in the, in the top right, soil. We'll okay. do that. Is there a bit of a figure there? Well, it could be, couldn't it? Could our be. Roman double act, Guy and Richard, have been looking at what kind of Roman coins have been found to see if the dates and values give us any clues as to why they were here. Do we reckon we know what we've got now? Yep, quite a few coins. Yes, I know we've got coins. Even I know we've got coins. What kind of date? Early second, speeding up in the third, quite a lot of fourth century stuff. Are they valuable? In ancient terms, no. So what does that imply? You'd either use them for everyday purchase on market stalls or fairgrounds or something like that and not worry if you lost them or if you're giving them to a shrine or something, the tendency is always to give the worst stuff, the copies, the forgeries, the foreign coins. What about the other metal coins? Well, there's some brooches, um, some of which may be as early as the first century, and one that goes up to the middle of the second century, but look that it's broken. Now, it's quite common in a religious context to give away broken brooches. Just as you might give away worn-out rubbish coinage, you give away scrap metal rather than good stuff. So lots of finds, but no structure. Yeah, we've got a real mystery. The coins are great, the brooches are great. It's a very, very strange place. What do you think it might be? Well, you could have coins uh, and no living, both on a fairground or a temple. A fairground? Yeah, market. If the coins were here because of a fair or market, this could turn out to be the shortest and least interesting time team ever. 
Something so ephemeral would be unlikely to leave any other archaeological traces. Everything now seems to hang on the only trench we've opened. Look, where's the boy Ashton? Where is he? Yeah, but that's a trouble. Should we go and get him? May as well call in the wrinkled professor while we're at it. <laughs> I'm worried when you have a stern no. face. We got our, we got what looks like our natural look coming yeah. on there. But look, there's some that looks coming round here. And we appear to have an edge. What I was requesting is to take out a bit of this. Yeah, take out a bit more. And and see whether or not we can. I mean, this if this is a, a ditch or something like this coming round, yeah. to put you a need slot, to see that natural the other side. That's why it's exactly what I'm yeah. saying. Okay, let's do that. What Phil thinks he's got is a man-made ditch cut into the natural geology. He's found one edge, and to confirm it, he needs to find the other one. Oh! Nice That's the other side of it, then. Nice one. That is, I like the look of that. Yeah. It's curving okay. round, yeah. it's curving round. All right, we'll have a bit more off, Phil. Just um, pick it up here. Looking better, isn't it? <laughs> He's pleased about that. <laughs> oh, I like the look of that. Hallelujah, there is some archaeology here. We now have two edges to our ditch. You're thinking flints and pottery, aren't you? <laughs> but this doesn't look Roman. Big they didn't build in curves, but the people who came before them did, which is great for Phil because he loves the prehistoric. That's got to be good, Mick. Got to be good. Right. You see, what we're interested in is you've got the natural there, yeah. natural bedrock yeah. there, this, this stuff, yeah. and you see there's an edge. Yeah. Comes across there, yeah. and it's and coming there. across there as well. Yeah. So there's summit yeah. going round there, yeah. that way. Okay. The question now is, what is it? It's a mystery that's going to keep us busy for a while, and really it's a bit of a fluke that we found it at all. But the quest for Roman has not been derailed by Phil's possible prehistoric discovery. Geophys and the field walkers have now moved on to the next field in search for an explanation of the Roman coins. Farmer Roger's mysterious shadowy square might yet be evidence of something Roman. The trick is to get him to remember where it was. Presumably you didn't actually mark the position of this shadow thing. Well, it was roughly in this sort of area. Roughly? Approximately. So how are we going to work out where to dig? Well, if you look at the maize plants, yeah. they are sort of stunted in this area, and it is stonier on the ground. So is that a different theory, or does that relate to the shadow? No, that relates to the shadow, I think. And was it around here? God, this is like extracting teeth, isn't it? Um, was it round here? that the bolt shed on the plough? Yes, here and all along the ridge line. Ah, we're getting somewhere now. Does your geophys indicate anything which might have sheared his bolts? I can I, hear you I, saying no before you've even said it. Look, with the eye of faith, you might just see something in there. Yeah. If I didn't know it coincided with Roger's sort of area, I wouldn't have bothered with it. Where is it? Well, we're, we're stood on it now. So do you reckon it's worth putting a trench in here? Well, we've got nothing to lose. I mean, if this is where the plough was hitting solid material, OK, we've not got anything special on the geophysics. We still ought to look at it. Well, this is not the most scientifically placed <laughs> trench we've ever had, but uh, we'll have a go, John. We'll have a Why go. Why not?